one. Today in the hot seat, who do we have? The original, the one and only, Mr. Don Brewer of Grand Funk Railroad. Selling out Shea Stadium, to me, that's such a huge thing because I'm from Brooklyn and Shea was right next door to us. Right. Just yeah. to sell it faster than the Beatles when you first came out and you didn't, you, the big hits weren't even out yet. That's what's so incredible. It was a scary time period. I mean, it, was, it wasn't scary. I mean, it was exciting, but it was scary. You know, I mean, just to think that we we meant that much in New York City, you know, it was a big deal, you know. Uh, you know, and I, I remember that I remember the, this guy, you know, the promoter, uh, Pete Bennett, um, he uh, he put together this motorcade with cops, you know, and all this stuff. And we're driving all over New York City, you know, and it's uh, it, it was exciting. It really was. But to walk on stage at Shea Stadium, you know, was, you know, shaking in our boots. It, re it really was scary. You know, yeah. I, I could totally imagine <laughs> I, I what you even got there. What was going on in your headspace, just like with the guys, like, oh my God, we're going to New York to Shea Stadium. What was? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty amazing. I mean, we, we, we knew it was, we were big, you know, we were, we were selling out every place all over the world, you know, and we came back and kind of the, you know, the, 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 the big cherry on top, uh, you know, of the ice cream was really doing Shea Stadium, uh, but, it, but it was, you know, it, it just hadn't been done by anybody, but the Beatles before us, you know. I mean, that was we were that we were the next band in line. You know, it was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, and then we we get on helicopters and we fly out over Shea Stadium. You can see all the people, you know, and and the lights behind the stage, Mark, Don, and Mel. You know, I mean, it was like, oh, pinch me, is this real? It was it was truly, you know, a rock and roll fantasy kind of a thing. You know. Uh, Uh, well, you know, we're here, here I am, just a kid from Swartz Creek, Michigan. <laughs> you know, it's wow. I could, I could, Im I, I can imagine. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a moment where you don't want it to ever go away, but it's a moment that's probably in your memory bank that's forever. Oh, you, I remember every detail. I mean, even as a fan of being of the Beatles, were you walking around? This is where the Beatles. This is probably where Lennon McCartney. Well, sat. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't. I mean, we were in a t different setup. You know, we had our own stage that was built and. Uh, and it was it was we were sitting in a different spot than the Beatles, but yeah, we I had flashbacks of the, of the Beatles, you know, and I remember seeing it on t on TV, you know, the girls screaming, and you know, and here we are, you know, I mean, it was just uh, unbelievable, you know, I mean, when we did Inside Looking Out, um, we're on stage. There was nobody on the on the infield. They wouldn't allow anybody on the, on the field because it was you know a baseball diamond, you know, and uh, and they were using it. So everybody was up in the in the bleachers, you know. Everybody was up, totally away from us. However, we're doing inside looking out. The bleachers were absolutely rocking up and down because people were like that into it, you know. I mean, it was we thought the structure was going to come down, you know. It, it was yeah, it was it was wild. Because they look like they look like ants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looked like ants. It did. Yeah. So there's nobody on. There's no tickets on the. Nobody out in front. Nobody in, field. in front of the stage at all. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we were totally separated. Yeah. Because being separated as a live band, as a musician, because that that distant, you know, it's like, oh, they're so far away. But you could feel the passion and love from the oh, New Yorkers. Oh, uh, yeah, you could you you could hear it and feel it and the whole thing, you know, right? And and there was no video back then either. There was no big big screen TVs or anything, so the people could see us. So so we were you know pretty small <laughs> yeah. compared, you know, yeah. Binoculars. <laughs> yeah, binoculars, right? Yeah. They had to have that. How about the sound system back then for you guys? Oh, it was, it was terrible. You know, I mean, <laughs> the, the sound and lights back then, you know, that was, it was pre, uh, pre sound and lights, really. Uh, you know, it, the lighting system probably consisted of three super troopers, you know, that were just one on each guy, you know, with some lights on stage that just kind of made it bright, 
Yeah. And, uh, and the sound system was the biggest one that, that you could find at that time to fill that stadium because they, you know, the sound systems weren't very good back then. No, <laughs> you know? so, not at all. So, you know, I mean, Terry Knight, our manager and, and our sound engineer would, you know, was just basically just turn it loud. You know, that, that was the whole deal, you know, forget the quality, just make it loud. <laughs> that, that was the philosophy. And being a drummer in the back part of it, how do you, you know, just keep your temples without the excitement? Yeah, you, just, like you, know, you know, I ha I was pretty much in my own world. You know, I, you know, the amps are right on each side. Mel, Mel's stack is over here and Mark's stack is over here. So that's all I heard. We didn't have monitors on stage at that time. You know, uh, there was no, there were no monitors. Uh, it was just, just us raw. That's cool. You know? that's cool. So I, I had, I had the whole, the whole film. We had, a, we had a film done of that. And I had the whole film, you know, put over di into digital and I took it into New York and we uh, and did the, the mixing on it. And the, the sound engineer just took the live stuff that was on on the tape, you know, on, on the, the on the videotape. And he said, it sounds great. It was just us live and nothing, you know, nothing overdubbed, nothing pre nothing recorded in a studio. No, you know, there was no sound truck there. It was just the us live going on tape you know and that's what it sounded like all he had to do is to just eq it a little bit and it, it sounded great it really did wow wow yeah. that's pretty cool yeah. you guys yeah, are just so cool. tight you, you yeah know, it was that... it was tight and it sounded good you know it was, yeah it was, it was cool before shea stadium before that time did you like were you like a, a band that would rehearse a lot like you know just practice in a room or would you we all we only rehearsed i mean we didn't rehearse much for the live shows we would rehearse for the live show just to to get the the crew and get the stage set up right and do that but we didn't spend a lot of time rehearsing the the live stage show because we were doing it all the time you know? was, yeah we were just changing it you know changing a song here changing a song there that kind of a thing the only time we rehearsed was really if we we're prepping for an album you know, and of course, back then, uh, we would record within three or four days, you know, we didn't spend a year on an album, it was done in three or four days, you know, so we would do the tracks uh, in one or two days, and then we do the overdubs on a day, and then we'd start mixing on a day. And that was it, that was it, you know, so that was it. Uh, we would spend, a, we would spend a few weeks rehearsing before we went into the studio, just to rehearse the material so that we, you know, so we didn't have to, you know, do multiple takes of songs. We knew the songs, you know, we, you know, when we went into the studio. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's yeah. more rock and roll that way too. It's, it's rock a... and roll. And we, you know, we left, we left mistakes on, you know, everything, you know, in, in the final recordings, you know, it was, there was no going back and fixing everything, you know, it just, the technology wasn't there. And, uh, you know, it, it was good enough. <laughs> I, 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 you know what, those, those little mistakes are the happy accidents that make it cooler and better. Yeah. Is there, is there anything like that on maybe on your drumming part or a vocal part, something that you just left well, the flub in? The, the intro to closer to home. Um, I think uh, Terry is talking on the top, uh, on the talk back, you know, and you can hear something going on while we're playing. You know, and there's this voice that comes on, and you know, it's just it's just Terry talking, you know, through the talk back, and that got recorded on the tape, and it didn't bother us. We just left it. I'm your captain, so I'm feeling. But what was it like, just working with Zapper? You know, I, you know, I had a great time with Frank because that was Mr. Don Brewer of Grand Funk Railroad. And if you enjoyed this episode, give us a thumbs up, put your comments down below but there'll be more of Don coming during the week. So hit that bell to be notified so you don't miss it when we air it. And also, you can see this episode unedited right now in our Members Only Club. If you do join, there's a lot of great perks where you'll be able to join the live chat when we record these episodes, be a part of the fun. Join our backstage party. Also, we'll be doing vinyl games where you can win vinyl records from us. But you gotta be in it to win it. Join now. And I want to give a big shout out to the two Debs that joined right here. Debbie Mola and Deb Jackson. Thank you for your support and thank you for being a member. It is only rock and roll and we like it. Until then, I'll catch you all later. And who loves you, baby? We do.